What is lurking behind your walls could be making you sick. You could be getting all these unhealthy things going on in your life, the way you feel, the way you look, the way your interactions are with people. Just, you know, what's lurking behind the walls and in other places could be secretly killing you. Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, and welcome to our first episode on health discoveries with Team TDW. And on screen today with me, I've got Ashley Swanson, our lead nutritionist and health coach at the Doctors Wolfson, and Carrington Beecham, our lead health coach at the Doctors Wolfson. Welcome, ladies, to our episode number one of health discoveries with Team TDW. Yay! We're excited to be here. Yeah. All right, so obviously this, this is so, so important about what's going on, and we're going to get into to mold, and mold is really a 21st century uh, uh, new problem that we're discovering. Of course, it's been around for, for thousands of years as far as mold causing illness, and we're going to dive into that, but before we dive into that, and we're going to break this episode into two parts, we'll try and keep this into 20 minutes, and we'll... we'll um, uh, you know, we'll you know record, we'll break it up into into two parts again. So kind of like where we're getting the mold from, what the toxicities are, what the symptoms are, and then episode number two, the next episode, we'll talk about what we can do once we're diagnosed with mold. So we're going to talk about where the mold's coming from, and we're going to talk about how to diagnose it within ourselves, and and really get into some good stuff here. If you're listening live on Facebook or you're watching this replay, make sure you send in some comments. If you like what you're hearing, press the like button and stay interactive you know, with us. Ask us questions. We'll be, we're certainly going to answer every question that comes on right now. And if you've got other things you want to talk about, uh, you know, certainly email us those at health at the doctorswolfson.com and we'll be able to give you more information. Okay. So, Carrington Beecham, uh, our health coach, tell us a little bit about you. Well, I've been, I'm a certified holistic health coach and life coach. I've been coaching for many years, had my own practice for many years, but then I've been with Team TDW for uh, like two and a half years now. Um, I'm really passionate about getting to root cause medicine, kind of like what we're talking about today. And also just root cause emotional and behavioral kind of changes. Uh, so I love, I'm really passionate about just working with people, helping them get from the beginning all the way to the finish line. <laughs> Ashley, you got Excellent. And Ashley Swanson, all the way from Iowa State, the Iowa State University, got her master's in nutrition over there. Ashley, tell us a little bit about yourself and why we should be paying attention to you. Yeah, I kind of have similar passions as Carrington, but love working with all of our patients and clients from afar and also near. Um, just getting to the root cause of their disorder as well and actually helping to heal them. So I've been working with Team TDW for about two years and loving it. I also write a lot of the blog posts um, for the website. So you probably have seen my name there. Yes, fantastic. All right, let's let's dive right into this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because this is so important. We really got to get into this as far as mold. Now, when I think about mold, I think about what's going on, you know, maybe like in the shower, or I think about mold or fungus growing on a, on a piece of fruit that we haven't uh, eaten or something left over in the fridge that we forgot to toss out. Uh, but but mold is a serious serious health problem. And uh, uh, Carrington, tell me, where where are we seeing um, uh, mold growing in people's houses? In your interactions with our clients and, and just in your history, where, where, where do you see mold is coming from? Well, I think in dealing with our patients, it is most commonly stuff you're not seeing. You know, like we can all notice the um, the mold on the tile in the bathroom or maybe in the seal on your washing machine or on your food like you described. But what I'm seeing is that there is some condensation either from the air conditioning or some kind of leak in the past that is unseen, that's in the walls or under the floors. And um, you really would have no idea that it's there or how serious it is. So people that spend a lot of time in their basements in different parts of the country where like in Arizona, that's not so much a thing, but we from all over the country. And so 
um, you know, exposure in their basements where there's not a lot of sun and moisture can, can kind of gather, but it's kind of shocking how much um, it is there. And I think that's why mold toxicity is so prevalent because if we saw it and we knew it was there, we'd probably be able to see it. And uh, this stuff is hidden and a lot more common than people think. Well, I think certainly that, you know, for you know, wherever there's water, there can be mold. So whenever yeah. someone talks about, hey, I live in Arizona, uh, you know, Arizona doesn't have mold. No, Arizona does have mold. And so does yeah. my old hometown of Chicago. And so yeah. does, you know, Milan, Italy. I mean, it, it, it's everywhere because anywhere right. that there's water, mold will grow. Mm -hmm. So that can, of course, be... Uh, in you know under under a sink it could be from a slow drip in a water system or in a bathroom it can be uh, it can be in the air conditioning system of your car uh, recently we had someone who had questions about their CPAP machine and the fact that there's a water reservoir in the CPAP Definitely. to actually you know, prevent the person from drying out overnight. So that, of course, can be a source of mold. So once again, anywhere there's water in your life, there can be mold. Um, yeah. And then, and then, so that's environmental mold. Ashley, do you want to tell us about some of the some of the food sources of of mold that, I mean, of course, we can all recognize, again, a piece of fruit or a vegetable or something that is moldy, but what about small mold that we ne we can't necessarily see, but it's in the food? Yeah, so mold can go on all food stuff, but um, it's going to be most common in your foods that have a high water content. Um, and what happens is they do, they produce those mycotoxins, which are naturally toxic to the body. And just like the kind of environmental exposures, food exposures are also going to have detrimental effects on health. But um, kind of the ones that you wouldn't think of are going to be your grains, your fruits, your dried fruits, your breads, that sort of thing. But also coffee. Coffee is a huge um, source of mold. And you can be exposed just directly by eating you know, the foods that have mold on them or indirectly by eating ground meat that's been, um, the meat itself ate food, so that had mold on it. So you can be exposed different ways. Wow, very interesting. So so if we're eating animal products and they were cons consuming moldy grains, yes, yeah. um, and, and it's certainly not anything that we promote, of course, grain-fed animals, we don't eat that right. on our in our system over here. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but clearly, if, if if they are getting corn and wheat, and those grains have kind of fermented, they've rotted, they've you know they've become moldy. Now the animal gets sick as as well. So, uh, one thing, you know, Dr. Olson, can I add to her? I wanted to say about coffee is that um, machines at the coffee machines at any kind of drive-through, Starbucks, McDonald's, anywhere people are getting coffee, mm -hmm. those are not like cleaning out those machines really well. And there's a lot of mold, even in the ice makers and things at those. So if you're going through drive throughs and getting coffee and uh, and going to Starbucks or things like that, there's you, you have to accept a certain amount of mold. And along those yeah. lines, getting like the pre-ground coffees in the stores, those are gonna be the highest kind of sources of mold. Study after study shows that over like 45 to 50% of the coffee brands actually have mold in them. Yeah. Well, I know our audience, just like all audiences, love their coffee. And I think the three of us are in agreement on that. And coffee can be phenomenally healthy, but, could, but it could be a source of sickness based on what you're saying as far as the, the mold exposure. And that's why we represent uh, and we, we push, if you will, uh, puritycoffee.com. And puritycoffee.com is the highest source of antioxidants. They also test for mold. And it is as mold-free of a coffee as you're going to find. So if you use the code WOLFSON at checkout, you get some goodies with that. But I, I think for most organic coffees, you're going to get low mold uh, exposure from that. But Carrington, you made an excellent point, of course. When, when you're not in full control of the coffee situation, uh, you know, and the coffee maker and all that stuff, that can be a source of mold. Uh, and then, like you said, uh, uh, Ashley, always, you know, grind the beans on your own, get a coffee grinder, mm -hmm. keep the coffee grinder nice and clean and, and grind the beans on your own. Carrington, um, uh, and by the way, uh, before, you know, we move forward, 
Once again, uh, I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, and I got my two health coaches with me today, and we're talking about mold toxicity and where to look for it, and then we're going to get into what to do about it. But if you're liking what you see, press you know press the like button on here, and also if you think other people may have mold in their lives, which we're going to get to the fact that pretty much all of us do, but if you think someone has symptoms, and we'll talk about the symptoms, and they're related to the mold, make sure you tag them also in the comments section so we can really share this information and get it out there. Uh, Lynn Bebo, thank you so much for, for being on and commenting for us. Okay, so Carrington, tell me, what are some of the some of the main symptoms somebody can have from mold? Well, I think the biggest things that show up are just um, fatigue, um, mental, you know, fog, and um, what's hard about the symptoms is that they can mimic a lot of other conditions, um, which is why I think that mold toxicity goes hidden for a lot of times. One of the things that I have found most interesting in coaching people is that um, gaining a lot of weight is definitely a mold toxicity symptom that I've seen a lot of people where they're mm -hmm. exercising and working out and they're eating really well and restricting calories and doing all the things and they're still gaining weight or they might have not really changed anything that they're doing, but they moved into a new place and all of a sudden they're just putting on all this weight every year and not knowing what's going on. Um, that can definitely um, be a symptom that we're seeing. But for, for most people, I would say that it's like um, a lot of our patients are very health conscious and things like that. So it's people that are like doing everything right. They're doing, they're changing their lifestyle and diet and all these things. And they're just declining year by year. And, um, and you know, with no understanding of why. And, uh, and so those are, those are the people we're seeing. There's also, yeah. I was going to, yeah, go ahead, Dr. Wilson. Well, I was going to say that, um, uh, you know, and, and I've got a patient I'm thinking of also is that he, he's eating the right foods. He's living as healthy of a lifestyle as possible. And yet his blood work is still not near perfect. He's got a lot of inflammation and we're trying to figure out where it's coming from. And we tested him for mold, him personally, mm -hmm. through a urine test that we're going to talk about, and his levels were sky high. Mm -hmm. So there's no doubt that once we find the source of his mold exposure, then we're going to be able to help lower his inflammation dramatically. Ashley, tell me, have you come across some people that have had a lot of symptoms, whether it's brain fog or weight gain or low energy, and then you were able to find some some food sources of mold that they're getting, like whether it's from coffee or grain, and you removed it, and then how they recovered. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I've had one patient comes to mind, but it's actually they were not able to lose weight, like Carrington said, and then they were also having, you know, atrial fibrillation, so having that irregular heart rate. So we were trying to really tie that to diet. So we went through an elimination diet and we looked at food sources of mold and identified her coffee. So she was getting the pre-ground coffee, non-organic. We removed it for a period of weeks and um, the heart rhythm issues kind of abated and she started to actually be able to lose weight. So it's kind of a long-term process where we're trying to reverse things. But yes, food exposures are huge once you eliminate them. All right, so um, and we're getting questions, of course. Everybody's interested in how you kill off mold once it's inside you, but uh, but we're going to get to that probably into the next episode because I don't want to. We don't want to go too long because there's so much to talk about as far as the symptoms of mold can be anything. Mold can be anywhere. We've already established that in the environment and in the food, and. What I, you know, and, and, and what's even more scary too, right, ladies, is that some people don't have any symptoms of mold. Their first symptom, if you will, is a heart attack or atrial right. fibrillation or high blood pressure. Right. Uh, you know, so they never really have brain fog or anything, but their first symptom is actually disease. Yeah, so yeah. I wanted to touch on that, but depending on kind of the mold toxin, like one of the most common things is just mitochondrial dysfunction. So mold toxins actually reduce the mitochondria's respiration, so it can't get energy. So the result of mitochondrial dysfunction is disease, whether that's autoimmune, um, heart attacks, heart problems, or cancer. So it's silent, silent symptoms. Yeah. 
One thing excellent, excellent, excellent. And you're going to you're, you want to dive super deep to our audience and get into mitochondrial dysfunction, right? We're, we're going to do that. Dysfunction so at the root of all disease. Yes. There goes the nutritionist <laughs> doing that. One thing I wanted to mention, Dr. Wilson, is that another symptom is food sensitivities. Like if yes. you, if our audience, you guys can comment if you're sensitive to gluten or casein. This is how you can develop sensitivities and why we see in our office those two sensitivities in almost every single patient. The proteins are really similar to what you're breathing in with mold. And so you can actually develop an immune response by breathing in the mold and it, the body thinks that it's gluten or casein. And all of a sudden you have these um, significant food sensitivities that wreak havoc and cause leaky gut. And, and um, for some people, even after removing them, we'll still see those markers high and um that kind of leads us to look into mold sensitivity because there's some mm -hmm. happening and the body's responding to it you know i mean and and obviously as we go along it's like everything is all intertwined so much mm -hmm. but it's like that that mold behind the walls is really this hidden secret thing that nobody's talking about right now we're all talking about certainly food and we're talking about uh, getting uh, active and getting outdoors and getting away from the pollution and the chemicals. But tell me this, Carrington, you've gone all over a lot of these mold tests uh, that we use and, and we'll have Ashley put this into the comment section. We're, right now we're using a urine test from Vibrant America. You can buy it directly from us. We send you out the kit, it's a urine kit. You get the sample, you send it back into the company. And then what we're going to do is, is that one of our health coaches is going to review the test with you and really just get so much, so much value into what's going on with the mold. Carrington, tell me, how many times are we seeing people with, uh, you know, with, with abnormal mold tests? I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen us test it and it come back negative. That's what I'm going to say. And what I find so interesting is that I will have worked with a patient for a little while and we're just kind of, we, you know, we go through the basics of diet and lifestyle and things like that. And then they're not getting better. And there's all these complex kind of code uh, infections or diseases. And they have a follow up with you, Dr. Olson, and you're like, let's check mold. And so they, so I'm always like, oh yeah, we need to check mold. And, and they, I review that test with them and um, it's shocking because um, it's just this hidden disease, this hidden illness that you wouldn't um, guess and without a trained eye kind of there or people bringing it to attention. And so there's different types of, um, so this test is testing for the mycotoxins that are circulating in your blood. The exposure might have not been recent. It might have been, you know, um, a couple years ago, and people have no idea that they have it. And it's those mycotoxins are circulating and hurting the body. And we can identify exactly which type of mold, how serious it is, if it's food source, if it's environmental source, and um, and then we have specific protocols to to deal with those things. So uh, getting tested versus on these mycotoxins instead of just guessing is probably the best way to go about it because the, the protocols can be a lot more specific. Well, I think like you just said, exactly. What's nice about the Vibrant test is that it gives us 31 different mold mycotoxins mm -hmm. and mycotoxin says it all. So mycotoxin is something that's released from the mold that you breathe in, that you ingest, it gets on your skin and it gets into your body and then you're, we're able to detect it in, in the urine. But those different molds that can kind of cue us in more into, are they food-based molds? Are they environmental molds? There is some overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, when it comes to food-based molds, of course, that's where Ashley really uh, is, is expert at. Um, you know, the, the, um, uh, the comments that we're getting right now as far as mold sensitivity and where people live, again, it doesn't matter if you're in the Deep South or you're in Arizona, or you live in the Sahara Desert, if you have any source of water exposure in the shower, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the laundry room, if you have running water in your house, you are exposed. This is not just about a leaky roof getting in behind the walls. It's because of 
a, a pipe that, that, that is slowly leaking in your house. The house can be 50 years old. The house can be, you know, can be a month old. It doesn't matter if there's water that's leaking and going on. So I see um, actually uh, a uh, Karen, lot of patients, if you will. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I see a lot of patients actually it's not even in their home. It's in their workplace, which mm -hmm. Frustrating and difficult, but um, you know they work in an old billing and they don't they don't have control over you know what got cleaned up well and things like that. So um, that, that's happening to a lot of people. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, for workmen's uh, compensation and stuff like that and going on disability, this is actually a very important thing um, because not that we're necessarily encouraging people, but if you're not feeling well, when you go to work, uh, and, and this could be a certainly, you know, certainly a reason why, and now you get tested and now the work environment has to get tested. Uh, and, and we saw a client like that as well. She was, she felt lousy every day. She went into work. It was brain fog. It was it was extreme fatigue. And then she would go home or go on vacation and felt great. And then we were able to get this test on her. She took it back to her employer and said, "Hey, we got to we got to find where this is coming from." Uh, and they did. They tested the place for mold. So you're right, uh, Carrington. It's not just in your house. It could be in somebody else's house. It could yeah. be in the workplace. It could be in your car. It's, it's all over, but we can do something about it. And on the next episode, and I apologize to everybody because I know you want answers right now, but you know we'll do that in the next episode because this that's a whole nother you know, chapter to get into. But right now we're talking about what are your symptoms and do you have mold in your body? And that's where the Vibrant test can really dial it in and give you a piece of paper, a certificate, if you will, that says congratulations uh, you know, uh, you know what, Jane Smith, you have mold mycotoxins in your body, and now we got to find them. Yeah, I think that it, the test has actually been super validating for a lot of patients who have maybe been feeling terrible for a long time and doing all the things right. So if you, if there's anybody listening and you feel like Gosh, I'm like eating well, I'm exercising, I'm doing all this stuff. And I just, and I go to my doctor and he says, there's nothing there and there's nothing wrong with me, but I know that something's going on and I can't figure it out. Um, if you've ever felt that way, let us know, because that is definitely what we hear a lot. And, um, and so getting that test back and seeing the mold composite, it's actually emotional. It's like validating for a long time of, of possible suffering. Along those lines, I'll post for doing um, free kind of 20-minute consults with us, the health coaches. So if you just kind of want to talk about symptoms and see if you're a good fit for the mold test, we'd love to talk to you and kind of go through all that. Yeah, most certainly. Thank you, Ashley. So what we're offering here with the Doctors Wolfton is an opportunity to speak with one of our health coaches. It's a 20 minute call. It's free, no obligations, but we're going to help you discover what's going on and where we can help. And it may be a mold factor. It may not be. You may want to jump into the test and then go over the results with a health coach. That's included in the cost of the test. Mm -hmm. Or once again, you could do a 20 minute call with one of our health coaches and to determine if this test is an appropriate you and discuss that as well. So Ashley will go ahead and put it in there, the sign up on how you can get into the health coaching. You can go to the website as well, thedoctorswolfson.com. And there's a little bar that pops down that uh, will invite you to a free health coaching call as well with one of our amazing, amazing health coaches. And uh, Carrington, isn't this so exciting now that we have this test available? Because right before we were telling people, maybe your symptoms are from mold, hire an inspector, tear apart yeah. your house, and yeah. let's see what happens. But now we can you know, kind of do it the other way around. We can test yeah. the person first. Yeah, like that patient you were describing, she like if she went in and said, I've been feeling all these things to her employer, they would have been like, well, it's not our not our problem. And then now she's able to go in with her test results and be like, hey, there's something here. And and we have um, proof. So it's it's so exciting just to be able to be in practice in integrative medicine where we have these most the most advanced labs in the world to tell us um, and pinpoint exactly what's going on. So we're no longer just guessing or putting people through detoxifications or, 
or, um, you know, protocols that are not fun to go through just in case maybe you have mold, you know, so we can now for sure know and not guess. And um, that means huge um, relief and success for many people. Ashley, what do you think about as far as food elimination um, and, and getting rid of foods uh, as, as a possible source? How, how would you recommend that? Aside from the fact that some, we said someone's going to switch their coffee, but are there some other ways that we would tell people, you know, for example, uh, you, know, you know, remove this from your breakfast, remove this from your diet, and let's see if, if it was a mold-related thing regarding the food. Yeah, well, I think um, when we switch patients, for example, to the paleo diet, like we're automatically kind of eliminating grains, which is a huge source of mold. Um, mm -hmm. So doing that and kind of long term looking at that or the coffee or the dried fruits or the peanuts or the peanut butter. Um, but it's a process. So when I've worked with patients before, we're kind of going through their day to day activity, like you said, like what are they exactly eating down to the sauce they're using and we're eliminating it. But it's taking a few weeks to kind of look for sensitivities and that sort of thing. Um, so we're kind of just restructuring their whole diet is what we're doing. Treating it like a food sensitivity where you eliminate it for like 96 days, but we start to see results in the first few weeks. Excellent. Excellent. You know, and in the um, in the comment section, if you would, too, I mean, if you've got, you know, had, had any history of water damage, tell us about it. Because remember, as we share stories with each other, that's how other people learn. And that's how we're going to make a big difference going forward and really making the world a healthier place. And, and especially for the children as well. So if you've ever had water damage in your house or the stories that we're talking about are resonating with you, whether it's your symptoms, uh, brain fog, fatigue, uh, weight gain, skin issues, eczema, inflammation, whatever your symptoms are, tell us about the water damage maybe you've had or sources of water in your life that you think could be an issue. Uh, uh, Carrington, what, what about outdoor outdoor standing water? What about uh, you know your garden? What about your lawn? What about your maybe you've got some kind of water feature or even in the pool? I mean, right? This could be anywhere. It really could. And I actually, when you're talking about garden, I actually think that indoor plants are a massive source of, of mold. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so people have to be very careful of that. Um, but also anything that's just sitting where there's water that can be gathering. Um, but I think potted plants, indoor and outdoors, are probably the, the biggest source of that. Um, and, uh, and so, and, and like you've mentioned in the car, in our environment, so, um, you know, getting your air filters cleaned out in your car and, um, making sure that there's not, um, moisture leaks or things in the air conditioning going on where mold could gather. Um, back, back to food. One thing that I, um, keep seeing is, is actually spices. I'm trying to encourage mm -hmm. Spices are a big source of mold because people buy spices and let them sit in their cabinets for 10 years. So if that's you and you have spices sitting in there, toss them out, start moving into organic spices and buy the ones that you're going to use most often and then use them up. If they've been sitting for even six months, toss them. So get organic, start growing fresh ones and using spices more often in your food and fresh spices more often in your food and throwing out, like I think you're adding a very healthy curcumin to your diet, but it's been sitting in your pantry for six years. It is not doing you any good anymore. Um, that and peanut butter. So both, the, so peanut butter is not on the paleo diet, but I think that a lot of paleo eaters still make exceptions for peanuts and peanut butter, but that is a huge source of mold. So if you're eating it by organic, the ones with the oil on the top that rise to the top and then go through it quickly. And because uh, those can be big sources of mold. Yeah, that's a good Love point. It. Just make sure to source those things from high quality because those mold mycotoxins, they become super chemically stable. So they can survive food processing and they're going to be in there till the end. So just source those good quality food stuff, whether that's spices or and supplements. Products. And supplements. And supplements. So a, lot, a lot of products out there are sourced by mold uh, products all over the world where these green mm -hmm. or things are getting, um, they come in with mold and it's companies that don't have high quality assurance and they don't test it 
Our yeah. products with Dr. Wilson's are always tested for molds. Sometimes that means things go on back order and stuff for good quality um, <laughs> source ingredients that aren't moldy. But if it's been sitting in your uh, medicine cabinet for a year, or if it's a low quality product, that's not a practitioner brand. Those are also huge sources of mold. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful stuff too. Uh, kudos to my Wolfson health coaches. How brilliant are, are these uh, two women? And then of course, our other health coaches as well that you can work with. And and it's free. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, this is a health transformation you can do in a 20 minute call with one of our coaches. Really, really exciting uh, stuff. So your schedules are getting super busy because people are just loving the stuff as well. The opportunity to work with one of the, uh, the doctors, Wolf and health coaches. So in, in the next episode, we're going to dive into how do we find where the mold is coming from? So who do we hire? How do we find it? How do we get rid of that mold that's there? Number two, we're going to talk about what to do about indoor air quality. And then number three, we're going to talk about strategies to get the mold and the mycotoxins out of our body and then retest and get some fantastic results. So again, if you if you like uh, this episode, give us a thumbs up, give us more comments, share it with your friends, tag your friends, they all could benefit from this information. And then we're also gonna put this onto YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button because we're gonna have more of this to, to follow. And uh, so excited, we are so appreciative of you and your time, we know how busy you are, but you're not too busy to stay healthy. So thank you again for watching this episode of Health Discoveries with Team EBW. Thanks, Thanks Dr. Wilson. Bye, guys. Have Bye. a good day.